Let's talk about queues, probably one of the most useful data structures in computer science. So this is going to be part one of three in the queue series. So the outline of things we'll be looking at, first we're going to begin by talking about queues and what they are, then we're going to go into some complexity analysis concerning queues, then we'll discuss the implementation details of enqueuing and dequeuing elements from a queue, followed by some source code at the very end in the last video. So a discussion about queues. So what exactly is a queue? So below you can see an image of a queue, but a queue is just a linear data structure that models a real world queue. Having two primary operations we can do, which are enqueuing and dequeuing. So every queue has a front and a back end. We insert elements through the back and remove through the front. Adding elements to the back of the queue is called enqueuing, and removing elements from the front of the queue is called dequeuing. However, there's a bit of terminology surrounding queues because there's not really any uh, consistency. When we refer to enqueuing and dequeuing, many people will use multiple different terms. So enqueuing is also called adding, but also offering. A similar type of thing happens when we're talking about dequeuing. So this is when we remove things from the front of the queue. This is also called polling elements. However, some people will also refer to this as removing an element from the queue. But the problem with saying that is that it can cause some ambiguity. Did they mean removing from the front of the queue specifically or from the entire queue? Make note that if I say removing, I'm going to be referring to removing from the front of the queue unless I say otherwise. So let's look at an example of how a queue works in some detail. However, first notice that I have labeled the queues front and back ends so you know where I'm going to be enqueuing and dequeuing from, respectively, to avoid confusion. First instruction says to enqueue 12, so we add 12 to the end of the queue. Then dequeue, so we remove the first element from the front of the queue, which is 55. Another dequeue operation, this time we remove minus 1 from the front of the queue. So next, NQ7, so add 7 to the back of the queue. DQ, so remove the front element, being 33. And lastly, NQ-6, so add it to the back of the queue, just like that. So now that we know what a queue is, where does this data structure actually get used? Well, a classic example of where a queue gets gets used is to model a real-world queue where you're waiting in a line at a movie theater or in the line at a restaurant. For instance, have you ever been to, say, McDonald's where all the caches are full and as soon as one of them gets free, the next person in line gets to order food? Well, that's a queue. So queues are, can also be really useful if you have a sequence of elements coming in, but you only need to keep track of, say, um, the X most recent elements. Well, you can add those elements to your queue, and once your queue gets larger than X elements, just uh, dequeue, essentially. Queues are also often used in server management. So, suppose for a moment that you have a web server that's idly waiting for requests from people to use your website, that at any given moment, you can simultaneously serve up to five people, but no more. If 12 requests come in in a short amount of time, you're not going to be able to process all of them as new ones come in. So what you do is you process the five that you're able to, and the remaining seven get to chill in a queue waiting to be served. And whenever you finish processing a request, you dequeue in the next request, and then you start processing it, and you do this until the queue is empty. While you're doing this, if more requests come in to access your web page, well, you just add them to the end of the queue. 
Cues are also used in graph theory to perform a breadth for search traversal on a graph, which is actually really useful. We're going to see this example in the next video. All right, now concerning complexity analysis of a queue. So as we've seen, it's pretty obvious that n-queuing and d-queuing operations are constant time. There's also another operation on a queue I have not mentioned yet, and this is peaking. Peaking means that we're looking at the value at the front of the queue without removing it. This is also constant time. However, checking if an element is contained within the queue is linear time since we would potentially need to scan through all of the elements. There's also element removal, in the sen not in the sense of dequeuing or polling, but in actually removing an element from the queue internally. This also requires linear time, since we would have to scan through all the elements in the worst case. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at some implementation details concerning a queue, so how it's actually done. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.